death be an awakening. But have you felt it? It's your boy Kevin, it's your boy Kevin. Today I'm going to do my Star Wars The Force Awakens review. And I'll put it to you this way. I'll start off this way. This is how I'll lead. Star Wars The Force Awakened gave me a headache. A bad headache. A headache so bad that I had to go home after seeing this thing and lay down for a couple of hours. Seriously. Now, I know you're saying, but Kevin Thomas, you're our Star Wars fan. Like, you know, with you, Kevin, it's, it's, uh, what is it? Batman, uh, the White Sox, Star Wars, uh, Michael Jackson, and Prince. And everybody sort of knows those my favorite, or some of my favorite ones. They're actually, Bert and Ernie was the first one. So those are, I guess, my fandoms. Um, so, and you're saying, well, damn, Kevin, how in the hell does Star Wars give you a headache? Well, I'll tell you how Star Wars gave me a headache. I went to go see the IMAX 3D. The prequels were an example of how sometimes the person who creates something can not know when to stop. George Lucas, in the prequels, did not know when to stop using the computer. Now, J.J. Abrams, in the new trilogy, or the new movie, the, uh, or what? The Force Awakens. He used physical, organic, practical sets. You know, the people were at actually at places. You know, it was like, you could tell, you know, they were in a room. You could tell that, you know, they were outside in the desert or wherever. Whereas in the prequels, it was like, oh, shit, you know, you made this whole movie in a computer, which, yeah, it looks good, it's perfect, but we all know that in real life, there are going to be imperfections, like the ones on my face. I'm a handsome guy, but I ain't perfect. Starts off action right away. They drop you right in. Uh, Star Wars tradition is to start the film in what a literary term called medias rest, which means is Latin for in the middle of things, in the action, medias rest, in the action. So Star Wars films always start you off, boom, right there with like a something happening. And they never tell you what's going on. It just, you know, the crawl goes up and, it, and something starts. So anyway, the movie starts off, Luke Skywalker is like vanished. He's gone. We don't know where Luke is. So anyway, they drop you right into the action. Stormtroopers on their uh, space or uh, uh troop ship or whatever it's like you know the guys going in at normandy you know omaha beach that's how they look they're all in there locking and loading you hear all these noises and you know they're looking all stormtrooper-ish you know with the the you know how do you know how to storm and then you can hear their voices they're you know we're about to attack you know how they talk that's how they talk so anyway it drops you right in on action then shows you a little cute little ball thing a little bb-8 now, BB-8 is very cute, but it's not, he's not stupid, corny, annoyingly cute, like, he's not, it's not, like, stupid, because he's actually, he provides a lot of comic relief in the movie, and the way they did that was very innovative, this is one scene in the movie where he balances himself, and it's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, it drops you right in on the action, stormtroopers come down on this planet, and then, you know, then they give us the reveal of the new vil the villain, Kylo Ren, you know, he comes walking out. You know, he's all, you know, in the black and stuff, with the mask. And he's got a cool voice. He's like, yes, you know, bringing him up to my ship or whatever. So you're all excited, like, oh, my God, you know, this guy is cool. So then he pulls out his lightsaber and, you know, <laughs> he's got this new lightsaber with a cross guard on it because he's a knight of Ren. So his lightsaber looks like the, the uh, swords of the knights. Uh, it's in the shape of the cross. He shoots at Kylo Ren. Pah, laser blast. How Darth Vader would stop laser blast. He would, and it would hit his hand and explode. Kylo Ren is so motherfucking bad that when you shoot a laser beam at him, he stops it in midair, and he's not even looking at it. He's like, you know, on some other shit, like yelling at you, like, you know, what's up with the, you know, the map? But this laser beam is sitting there. 
And the way they do the forest nowadays, they give it a nice, this is a sound they make, it's like a vibrating sound. And you can feel it on that stereophonic, you know, the, the, the IMAX, it's, you know, crazy. So anyway, so the movie is nonstop action all the time. In this part of the review, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about Luke Skywalker. Um, I really like Luke Skywalker's part in the movie. I like, I like how the movie sort of built up to him. I like how he was uh, still a central character in Star Wars. Uh, I believe that, I believe that The Force Awakening refers to Luke. It does not refer to Rey. It refers to Luke. The reason it does not refer to Rey is because The Force was already awakened Rey. Rey already knew that she was uh it was like one of those situations where you may have a sit a, you may have something where you know you it's like memory it's inner the force is already in ray and throughout the movie they kind of alluded to the fact that the force was strong with ray like for example they had a scene where you know she was trading the junk and uh you know she's all inside of the uh trading the junk spaceship parts and uh you know somebody tries to you know uh, swindle her get her punch her or something so she takes her staff out she's like ah, ah. and she like you know really kicks this guy's butt which to me was indicative of her jedi you can see the you can see the jedi in her you know me i guess me being the star grizzled star wars vet of many many episodes you know since 1977 i can I can identify the Jedi qualities of the people. And I, I saw them in Rey. So the Force did not awaken in Rey. The Force awakened in Luke. Um, a lot of people are saying that, you know, J.J. Abrams borrowed a lot from the other Star Wars, which, I mean, that's cool because why wouldn't you? If somebody gives you the keys to the $38 billion juggernaut that Star Wars, I'm going to go back and, like, you know, borrow a whole bunch of stuff. And then I'm going to create some new stuff. Of course, they had to say, I think, like, in every Star Wars movie, I think somebody has to say, oh, this, I have a bad feeling about this. So, somebody, then in 3D, the X-Wing fighter is, like, all in your face. And so when, you know, the X-Wing fighter gets hit by the TIE fighter, the lightsaber fights were better. They he took, he stripped them down because um, I think the lightsaber fights in Star Wars movies, you know, prequels, had, it was so fast. And, you know, I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I like how they were more, they're more organic. They weren't computer generated. It wasn't computerized. That's the thing. The new Star Wars is good because it wasn't computerized. And the parts that were computerized were computerized because they needed to be computerized. Not because, oh, you know, shit, fuck it. I got a computer. I'm going to show you what I can do. Kind of like when you Photoshop. I mean, yeah, it's obvious you use a computer, but even when it's obvious that you Photoshop, it shouldn't look like you tried to Photoshop. So, you know, you shouldn't be doing, you know, crazy stuff. I mean, unless it's obvious you're trying to. So, um, George, uh, I'm sorry, J.J. Abrams. Oftentimes, things are not as they appear. Um, but, you know, I'll leave it that way. A lot of people are saying, you know, Harrison Ford, you know, was like, I want this character to die. But uh, that's bullshit because I don't care who you are. Han Solo is bigger than Harrison Ford in terms of uh, literary character, in terms of uh, the amount of uh, marketing. So, you know, Disney could be like, well, Harrison Ford, you don't want to be in this shit. We'll just go get another person. They can do it. Movies do it all the time. TV shows do it all the time. They'll replace a favorite character. You think, oh my God, the show's going to suck. And then after a while, you don't even notice it anymore. So I believe that somehow or another Harrison Ford still, I believe his story arc is not finished. I believe his story arc is not finished going forward because 
is to come to Disney World and spend all that money on Star Wars. So, that being said, good job. And, uh, you know, hey, go check it out. Nothing will stand in our way.